All right, and TikTok. Hey, Camille, how are you? How's your kid? You going over there, checking, checking out how, how he's doing? Hello, Wayne. Really? So soon? Wow. Well, that's great. Congratulations. That's awesome. Seems so soon. I, I'm always pushing for like more more a little bit more safety you know in those situations but i've had that situation too so uh yeah so take good care of care of the baby at home congratulations what's oh, so wonderful all right everybody on tiktok's coming in we got everybody on uh, youtube and zoom kelly says eh, my work hours suck it's good to hear you now <laughs> yeah you weren't able to be there today eh? sugar levels stabilized let's take them good all right yeah so for the most part um this is going to be just a quick uh let's take a look at symbols uh tonight same thing tomorrow night we got the uh, live trading all day wednesday and then uh, Thursday night, we're going to have VIP class. Uh, so uh, for tonight, let me just quickly go over SPY and VIX and maybe some of the sectors. And then we'll move into uh, some tickers. And if and when you recommend tickers, uh, I'm pretty much going to prioritize anyone who says something about the ticker. doesn't just put a ticker. I might still check it out, but uh, I'll probably prioritize anyone who has a little thesis behind it. Hey, I was thinking about getting into, you know, such and such uh, for a swing trade for three weeks or three months. What do you think? Or I day traded this today. Maybe I should have sold. What do you think? Blah, blah, blah. If you have an explanation with it, I'm going to favor those. But, but still, uh, let me go over some of the market uh, first and then we'll get into that. All right, so uh, today we had another doji top on the market at the top. And uh, technically that's the third time that we've touched uh, this level of 418 and have not been able to push past it. Uh, whether or not that becomes significant, you know, remains to be seen, but it can mean that that's a current market top. As time progresses, uh, those higher levels get broken. So, so it may not be uh, a sign that uh, this is the end of the top uh, of the run of the market, uh, or it may be. So it really could go both ways. Uh, if I pull out my annotation tools here, we can uh, kind of highlight that. So the first uh, top was here, second time on Friday, third time today. It just can't seem to get through that level right now. Uh, that can change, and then when it and and if and when it does, it can just burst forward uh, with a, a huge level of appreciation. I feel like that's uh, way, 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 way overbought at that point. I mean, we just had a historic once in a fifty-one years run all the way up to this point uh, from down here, and uh, I think that. Uh, you know, by the time this week is done, we may see some correction or consolidation of some kind, at least back to the middle here, 410, uh, it, it remains to be seen. There are a couple key um, economic numbers coming out this week. Uh, there's some on Friday, some on Thursday, and the Fed is speaking on Wednesday. So tomorrow probably is the freest day, the loosest day. Uh, there are some economic uh, figures coming tomorrow, but they're let's say not as cataclysmic as Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. So uh, tomorrow, uh, maybe it'll toy with that high and uh, come back down or stay up there. And then on Wednesday, um, uh, react uh, much more strongly. 
So uh, probably more of the same tomorrow. Uh, and then uh, Wednesday uh, with the Fed uh, announcement, whatever they're going to be able to say, um, probably the market will freeze like it usually does, just just like really low volume. Everybody's hanging out, waiting for the Fed to make their statement. And then, uh, and then the market will just release all this tension uh, once the uh, important information is being released uh, Wednesday. So tomorrow, maybe your last day filled with some volatility uh, this week uh, until the end of Wednesday. And then Thursday and Friday, uh, there will be further numbers released, uh, but the market may not, uh, may not continue in the direction that you are hoping or expected that it might shift gears in different directions. Also, we've got big earnings this week, um, Apple and others uh, reporting earnings this week, uh, very big um, influence on the market. Uh, some of the biggest companies on the S&P 500. So that may change. That's, uh, I believe, coming Wednesday. Uh, that may change also um, how everyone feels about the market. So this is an interesting week on the market. Uh, we are topping out, uh, unable to break through. There's a lot of range here uh, of congestion from prior days, many, many prior days. Uh, and this could be almost a zone that we're in. 412 to 418, 412 to 418. And, you know, we could just be battling this zone for a while uh, <clears throat> and it really wouldn't uh, hurt or change uh, any any of the big uh, market movers and market makers uh, in the market. And yet you could be getting whipped out in and out of trades for the next week or two. We could easily stay within these within these bounds and the markets can just bounce and bounce and bounce and chop uh, essentially and um, just continue to uh, whip you out of your trade. So be very, very uh, cautious, probably light, uh, be mostly in cash. Uh, the market can go one way or the other at, at any particular point when an economic, economic number is released. Be careful is the pretty, pretty much the theme for the week this week. Be careful. Yep, same thing, uh, Kelly. Yeah, <laughs> interesting, interesting. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much prognosis for SPY. And uh, let me see if I can get a different um, interval on SPY. I have to pull up this window a little bit. There we go, like the one hour chart. So there you can see in a little bit more detail how the market has been slamming up on that number up there, 418, right here. And then today, just all day, it's just like bounce, 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 bounce. And then uh, about a week ago. Uh, so that's triple top. Normally, that's a sign uh, that um, uh, we're going we're gonna to reverse as a triple top but it can also be a sign of consolidation uh, as we get higher and higher lows. So we may see uh, the market swing down to a particular number, maybe on Thursday on economic data or Wednesday after the Fed speaks. It may swing down and put in a higher low. And then on uh, Friday, same thing, a higher low. Uh, and, and so then overall, what you got is a wedge forming. And in that case, that's a flat a bullish flat top wedge, which is pretty bullish. And then eventually uh, price will break to the upside. So a lot of different ways to this market could go right now. And when, you, when you're in that situation where there's a lot of diagnosis you can make and, and other analysts are, are drawing either similar or different perspectives, uh, it just means that any of them could really be probabilities. Uh, it's just which one is the highest probability, it's hard to say. So, so again, you know, pull out, get into cash, uh, and uh, watch yourselves over the next uh, few days. I think that's generally what everyone's saying. So, uh, let's see, uh, let's take a look at uh, the VIX. So, the VIX being the market of the Fear, the uh, measure of the fear in the market, uh, anything below 20 is, is good. 
Uh, and right now we're at 17, uh, but uh, we were previously uh, hitting into the 16s for three days in a row, but now we can't seem to get below 17. So there's there's an increased level of, of fear in the market. Um, and, and personally, I would say from what I'm seeing that I think it's actually more than, than what the VIX is gauging. Uh, it certainly feels like more, but that's, that's, that's what I find a little bit uh, strange about the market right now is that there's, there's enough um, uncertainty in the market that it's hurting people and people are getting whipped out of their trades and their positions and losing money. And there's enough uncertainty in there that there, it's freaking people out at times. And yet the fix is, is not really moving its needle too much. So it leads me to believe that a lot of this is manipulation. But we shall see how this plays out over the next week or two. All right, let's take a look at on also the daily chart, uh, some of the different sectors. So like uh, tech. Tech is still uh, on a run, still doing okay. So, uh, you know, if numbers on Wednesday come out positive, uh, that really won't be a surprise because uh, <clears throat> There's room. See, if you see uh, on this chart here, there's been essentially a channel uh, going on across the top and there's room. There's room to pop to the upside. And so tech numbers could come in uh, favor favorably this week. We shall see. Uh, it's still in an uptrend for sure. And it's at the top end of the range. So uh, if you are looking to get into any of the position for a month or more, uh, you may want to wait for it to pull back to kind of the bottom end of the channel. So you might be saying like, what, what channel or what's a channel? Uh, possibly uh, a channel is when you have a top side that keeps increasing like it is uh, and a similar uh, bottom side. You could almost get several aligns going there uh, when you're doing your uh, technical analysis on that. And entries are much better on the lower end. So like if you can wait for moments like this, that's the kind of patience you want to have and get in uh, down there uh, on your favorite uh, tech stocks when it when they pull back to the bottom end of a channel that they're in. Uh, then you can either hold you know, and then just add on and continue to add on like with your savings, wherever you're managing that particular investment. Or if you're swing trading it, uh, you can then sell when it gets to the top end of the channel, like up here, like we were at for the last few days. Uh, and then again, just like put your money over here in cash, wait for uh, prices to uh, come back again, which they seem to do every couple of months. The last time you had these low of prices was in late October and uh and then uh, march uh so that's about five months between buy points so that takes a lot of patience <laughs> but the payoff is good it's much better your your risk uh getting in at the top here when you get in at, at any kind of a top uh the problem is it takes so long before you can make an inch of money right like this is now uh, like a month or two months later from that particular point. And it's only up a little bit from that point because you had so much drawdown. You don't have to worry about the drawdown effect so much if you get in at the bottom end of your channel at these points. Then, I, you know, even when it has another pullback, you're even up from before. So that's why buying on pullbacks is so much more profitable and low risk and easier to stomach than uh, getting in on FOMO or trying to chase. <clears throat> now, 10-year uh, rates uh, have been going up uh, ever since we flattened out. Uh, so we have basically economic deflation here, which was the crash last year. Then we have stagflation, which is just price channeling across sideways, uh, rates rather, channeling sideways. Uh, they did happen to hit a low at one point of basically 0.5, 0.5%. Uh, and then you had them go on this channel run and that would be called inflation or more specifically reflation in the economy. 
But what we have uh, lately in the last few weeks, which has really stumped a lot of uh, hedge funds and traders, investors, um, we have this uh, stalemate in uh, in rates right now, in reflation. So I think that what the Fed says this week on Wednesday uh, may help either, um, well, it'll help them clarify what's going on there. But uh, see here, rates have have kind of gone sideways, if not pulled back. Depends on how you want to technically analyze that. A uh, bit of a pullback could be a. Uh, we see we, we need to get to about 2.25, which is way up here, and that may indeed be the pattern that's coming. You know, this could be a little pullback moment we're having, and then we're going to take off again soon enough. Uh, but we need to get back to 2.25. And uh, the Fed has said that they don't foresee that happening until next year, uh, which I think is way off. I think that probably threw everyone through a loop. Um, rates are rising really fast. And uh, I would be uh, surprised if uh, they weren't uh, above two and closing in on 2.25 by the end of the summer, if not by you know, Thanksgiving. So anyway, uh, rates are rising <laughs> and uh, with rising rates, you uh, have financial sector uh, doing better. Same thing over there, rising financial sector uh, because they make money off of lending and the higher the rates, the better. And they basically buy their long-term um, loans when rates are extremely low. And then they resell them to you when uh, rates are high. And that's their business. That's why they have billions and they get to do that to you. So they make the money on the spread. And then uh, XLI, uh, base materials uh, during inflation. Uh, look at that, just boom, straight, straight increase in price uh, on base materials uh, during inflation and reflation of the economy, as expected. 700% more profitable on the bottom entries versus staying in for the whole duration. That's right, Kelly, he remembers the number from, from Amazon analysis. Uh, also along with base materials is uh, industrials, uh, same, same deal there. A uh, huge amount of uh, inf inflation during this economic reflation. Energy tends to do the same thing, uh, but being more commodity based and oil um, pretty much topping out around $65 as analysts say, uh, it has you know, basic, actually, if you look at energy, that run that it's on, uh, closely reflects this topping pattern that's going on in the 10 year, in the 10 year yield. So you'd be surprised how influential the 10 year yield is on uh, everything that you do in the stock market. Uh, the 10 year yield and oil kind of drive the entire show. And then GDP of, a, of each nation. Uh, what else? Uh, XLK, XL, XLV Healthcare, obviously doing great. Uh, off of the coronavirus, uh, whole deal there. And um, Excel, uh, well, we got base materials, communications, communications also um, like tech uh, going straight on up. So if, if these are things that, you know, these these may be trajectories that aren't slowing down. <coughs> and in that, in that case, uh, if that's something that you want to invest in, you can just, you don't have to pick companies. You can just, go with the right economic choices, you know, due to the economy stage that we're in. So you can just get into XLC communications. You know, you can just invest in communications, XLC. That's a uh, investable sector. Um, and then um, XLK or QQQ uh, for technology um, or XLI for industrials, you know, and, uh, but maybe not so much XLE, you know, a little bit choppy. So see what I mean? If you put money on XLI or base materials, XLB, uh, you might have a nice smooth ride of appreciation. Also another um, ETF that we're in right now for economic reflation uh, period is BIZD, B-I-Z-D, um, yields about nine to 10% uh, dividend and, uh, <coughs> and does very well during this reflationary moment in the economy. All right, somebody actually asked for me to take a look at QQQ, but you know, we've already looked at QQQ. So uh, yeah, great. Uh, let me know uh, what you guys would like to look at now and we'll take a look at it for the remainder of the program here. 
And I might even cut it short uh, today, uh, but we'll be here and we'll do it again tomorrow. But let's see. <laughs> Somebody in the luck bag says, dude, do you ever sleep? Uh, that's really funny because it's the second time somebody asked me that today. And um, man, like I just like try to take a nap between shows, uh, whatever I can, where <laughs> I sleep whenever I can. I definitely do not get enough sleep during the week and I sleep on the weekends if I can. This last weekend, we had a lot of fun though. We went out canoeing and went out to the rivers, did some tubing and uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I really do wish that I just had 48 hours of sleep on the weekend, though. <laughs> uh, Kelly says, Mavis had a great run today. Can we look at this? Uh, I might not be able to uh, look easily at yet at a day trade, uh, but maybe on the on the bigger picture, on the, on the big chart here. Okay, so as you can see now, Mavis is unhinged. So it's a day trading stock only. You can't predict it uh, from here on out. The best way to go about this is to just uh, day trade it see this little spot right here that coupled with this gigantic candle and the previous one really it's started to skip uh shows that it's become unhinged and uh, it's no longer uh, in any kind of like pattern that you can rely on now it's not you know what i'm saying like it definitely did something that you're expecting this uh but that's it you know you had to get out today because you just don't know what tomorrow's going to bring and if like that worries anyone, you know, they're getting the FOMO. Yeah, well, what if it goes up without me? Uh, wake up at fucking four in the morning and get in. Like if you think you're going to miss out on something and, you, you know, uh, you know, put your money where your mouth is, set the alarm, get up and get into the stock at the beginning of the day. Otherwise, shut up and just like save your money. Be careful. <laughs> this is not for people. You know, FOMO is going to kill you. You're going to lose so much money on FOMO. It doesn't work. It's not an actual um, helpful factor in investing or trading. You do not want to be using FOMO uh, in your trading. <laughs> so that's what I think about that, Kelly. All right. Uh, what do you think about Palantir? Davin, like I said earlier, you're going to have to say something more than that. Like we need to know like for what? Uh, ENB, please. I bought a June 18 call option thinking this will keep moving up. Good choice or a bad choice? All right, let's see. When did you buy it? ENB. And uh, I will funnel through over to uh, you on YouTube and you on um, TikTok as well. Stay tuned, but make sure that uh, you've got more than just a ticker for me. I'm going to favor people who are a little bit more descriptive. Uh, you know, based on what I'm seeing here, if you can almost, uh, I don't know if you day trade with us. Who asked this? Lynn? Yeah, you probably don't day trade with us. But, um, you know, you almost can see this kind of a pattern in a day trade. The market opens. It's like bing, bing, bing. And then there's this volatility crack at the open, some dip, and then it breaks the opening range. And then it makes uh, its first run, its first pullback, its second run, second pullback. And then the third high seems to be like it's not making as much progress. Tests your fate a little bit, has that fall, and then starts to go on like incremental progress, and then maybe starting to go sideways in speed, possibly topping out, and then it craps out for the rest of the day. You know what I mean? <laughs> this uh, is the daily chart we're looking at, but I mean, this literally looks exactly like the kind of pattern we see on a day trade uh, just playing out in the market over time. Uh, so I don't know if that's what's going to happen, but for now, uh, good luck to you. And I would say uh, just watch your pivot points. So, uh, and if you want to learn more about uh, pivot points, here here's a class uh, course or whatever you want to call it, uh, um, some lessons that I've put together, more or less, uh, for you at this link there, marketmastery.teachable.com. All right, from uh, TikTok, is CCIV being short squeezed? Yeah, what was going on today? What's a good entry point? Uh, yeah, let's take a look at it, but I don't think I'm going to have that kind of an analysis for you. Uh, where is it in after hours? Um, looks like it's uh, just about where it got left, which is interesting. Well, uh, it's been in a downtrend, right, ever since it uh, you know, uh, was... Um, IPO'd or went public, 
Uh, and it's been in a downtrend, which means it's making uh, lower highs and uh, lower lows. But what happened today was unusual. And if it's a short squeeze, uh, you know, who knows how long it will last before that's depleted. But I can tell you this, that once price breaks this pivot point here, which is like right around the corner. I mean, what is that? That's like 25. Uh, then it's free to run all the way up to 33. I sound like Christopher Walken there. It's free to run all the way to the top <laughs> of 33 here. <laughs> Oops, what, how did I? That's really interesting. All right, somehow I clicked on somebody's name there. Uh, so, uh, for, so tomorrow it could really take off. In other words, if it's going through a short squeeze, uh, there's a bit of room there uh, until the next resistance level at 33. So that could be pretty big. 25 to 33 in one day could happen. 32% increase. With options, that could be insane. More cowbell. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, very interested in uh, Bitcoin targets. Oh, dude, we have to talk about Bitcoin, okay? Because you guys don't know what you're fucking doing. <laughs> All right, hopefully you got the alert today. You got to get out of Bitcoin. And then I heard people saying, Bitcoin's going up. So I looked at it and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you guys are just stupid still. <laughs> Listen, you guys need to take a look at these charts, okay? Let's go over it now. You really need to understand uh, when something, whether or not something's going up or not. Okay, so uh, because I, I want you to lose money, that's essentially it. I want you to have more cowbell. <laughs> so we have higher highs here. There's like several different ways you can you can analyze this. There's people who do trend line trading analysis, um, and you can combo it, you know. Um, and then there's pivot point analysis. And what I'm doing right now is pivot point analysis. Okay, and we recently broke that pivot point. Uh, this recent higher high. That's really important. That's progress. Progress destroyed, right? This was, has been progress uh, continued, you know, continuing progress, uh, making higher highs and higher lows. But now we've destroyed that progress. So uh, as some of you know, when we chart stocks, when that happens, that means that's the beginning of the flip side of a stock. Okay, so this, this is the beginning of the end of the bullish run on Bitcoin. And people are like, yeah, but it's going up. Well, yeah, it's going to go up like this. Okay, but then it's going to make a lower high. It's in a downtrend now. It's flipped. So this is what we're probably going to see. And as some of you know, <laughs> we may see that milking pattern happen. So uh, people will just start getting milked out of the market. And I don't know how long that's going to last. Uh, I do hope that um, that gets turned around. Um, the only way that it can get turned around is if it breaks this high. So quite literally, you need to be out of Bitcoin long, okay? You need to be out of Bitcoin long until price can break that high because until then, you're trapped. You're going to be trapped. It's a trap. You understand? So... Uh, that's what these are. These are traps. That's what these, these, this right now that, that's happening, that nice green uh, push up, that's a wonderful, gorgeously well constructed trap to suck your money by people with lots and lots more money than you. And you're getting excited. Ooh, yeah. And it may go in, uh, go up up here, and they're like, wow, I'm going to buy more. And everybody starts buying more. Uh, and then uh, we get, and we make it come down and we make a lower low. And this thing's just not looking good. Thirty. Well, yeah, this chart that I'm uh, looking at uh, is in market cap. Let me pull up the Bitcoin uh, U.S. dollar. Okay. Uh, so right now it's uh, we're talking it's at fifty three thousand. The break, the pivot point break, was basically fifty thousand two hundred, and uh, yeah, that that's bad. It's like, uh, it's not uh, too subjective. Another thing is, 
uh, you could have gotten out even way before that if you were a trend line trader. So like you could have scored a line across it like that, right? Or let's do it even, I think you guys have probably even seen this pattern we've been drawing sometimes on some of the, some of the charts, watch, ready? Right, so look at that, right? And then what have we seen after that? Like what stock, CCIV or, you know, you name it, right? Once that break happens, you know what happens? And by the way, it's not a coincidence that that particular bar is fucking hellfire. Like it's just hell. Look at it. It's huge, big red, gigantic bar. Why? Why does that coincide with the break of that trend line? Because that was it. You know, smart people know to get out right at that point. That was a huge sell-off day. That was that was day number one. That was signal number one to get out. Signal number two was pivot point trading, which was down here. And it's happened. So you're gonna so you guys gotta watch yourselves. Uh, you're probably not gonna see it go above <clears throat> that bar. Uh, but certainly you can't be bullish on Bitcoin until it breaks uh, that high. It's now either sideways or in a downtrend. It's not in an uptrend anymore. That you can take off your list. Bitcoin uptrend, make money, buy low, sell high. No. Nope. <laughs> what is that bar number? Uh, it was a particular day. Uh, it was day, the date was uh, April 18th. Kelly, yeah, I'm not speaking to you like at all. Like, don't even worry. That was like everything I was saying. I'm just talking about like people who, you know, uh, anyone out there who's making the wrong decisions, uh, they gotta, they better be careful. Um, boy, I sure hope they get lucky. Uh, but at the same time, I kind of don't because, you know, one of the worst things you can do at the beginning of learning how to trade and invest is get lucky. Then you then you suddenly know think you know what you're doing and that can be a real disaster because then you double up you you increase your risk and then ouch. All right, you guys, uh, you guys have a lot of questions, um, and uh, make sure you uh, click the link in my bio. Everybody watching on TikTok um, right now because then you can come in and join the Zoom. I'm gonna put yeah I posted it in the group. You just gotta go to free alerts. Let me see if I have that uh, still on my clipboard. Yeah. So everybody on TikTok, you can just go ahead and click the link in my bio and uh, that'll take you right into uh, my Discord and can come into my Zoom and hopefully I'll see you in there and you can ask some questions over there. Baba has been uh, lacking direction. Is it a good entry? Uh, maybe let's take a look at that. But I will tell you this, that uh, I've been pretty bearish on Baba for a long time. I believe it was Baba. Maybe I'm getting one of those Chinese companies confused. But by the way, why do you have the 333 there on your Evan J? I'm very curious. Tell me about that while I pull up Baba. Okay, yeah, Baba was one of those ones. So you can almost just see it right there. Look, it's going up in this channel and then the break. And that break happened exactly, it looks like probably on the earnings release, something like that. And then look, a low, like all you gotta do is learn to read charts. It, you know, uh, some charts, uh, most charts are not difficult to read. Some of them are, but most charts are not difficult to read. Look. Here's a lower high than this high. That high was way up there. This high is lower. And then what did, what did it do? Lower low. So here's where things get tricky. Then it made a lower high, but now it made a higher low. A lower high. But this one might not be significant. You know, It may go and do this and make a lower low. So I mean, right now, uh, the most important thing to realize is it's in a downtrend. That's the most important thing to realize. So why fuck around with it, right? I mean, go find something that's like this side, you know? Why, why not get into something that's doing this? You know, what Baba's doing, what Baba was doing last year. Find one of those. Why gamble on all this? You don't need to. Like, get over it. Like, whatever it is that you love about Baba, like, get over it. Like, he who adapts fast wins. 
in this market, right? All right. Maybe on puts, you know, maybe. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. An old poker buddy inside joke. That's crazy, man. Uh, because my uh, my name is Evan Edward Evans, E E E, and the name of my company is E Cubed. So I have an E on every face of a cube that looks at you, and uh, E to the third power, however you want to say. And so uh, also, if you turn them in, invert them, they become three three three. If you put my name back, so that's kind of like my own little numbery thing too. So I'm Evan with a three 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 as well. That's crazy. What about Doge? Yeah, let's take a look at Doge. Sure. So Doge uh, basically has pulled back to about a 50% retracement. Uh, with all the hype going on about Doge, um, you know, it's settled in at about a 50% retracement. If Doge is going to go further, this is good. This is a good time to get in. You know, 50% retracement. It's hanging out at this level for several days. It seems pretty low risk. You know, you want to have an out point though, uh, you know, down below that level there. Let me get it uh, based on the US dollar so I can get you actual numbers. Okay, uh, so if these numbers are correct, leak translating, then I'm talking about, you might want to set a stop at like 0.22. You can get in now at like 0.27. And then if it runs, you might be looking at uh, uh, like 0. 0.7, something like that. So like a triple, like a 300% increase from here. Uh, however, you know, if it if the hype ever fades, which I guess it, it won't, it may not, uh, then uh, you, you should be looking at some kind of a level like 0. 0.08. So really have a stop, be careful, because all you got to do is stop out uh, take your money, even if it's at a loss, that's what a stop is for. Uh, take your loss, take that money, and then you can go put it on something else that's making money. Wow, you know, Doge might be struggling in the future if it were to break down, you know, and then you're, you're thinking, yeah, but why should I do that? I can just hold for, you know, six months and wait for the price to return. Yeah, but the thing is, you, that's why you're losing more money than other people because smarter traders are taking their money off at that stop point. And instead of suffering their money through all of that time where it's doing nothing, and in fact, you know, just been losing money all the time, they've taken that money and they're putting it on something else that's going up during that time. So, you know, so, so that's the importance of stops is to get you to uh, get your money to make you money more days out of the year. You want your money making money for you every day ideally. So anyway, yeah, those looks good to pop. Somebody asked about Ethereum. Let's see, let's take a look at Ethereum. And again, you guys go ahead and click on the link in my bio or uh, follow me or whatever. Uh, if you want to come join uh, the Zoom right now, I see a bunch of you have just uh, joined. Thanks. And uh, cool. Welcome. Welcome to the group. All right, let's see if I can get Ethereum. Uh, in dollars, yes, calculated by crypto cap. Hopefully that's going to be correct. No, <clears throat> Ethereum USD. There we go, by Coinbase. That'll be better. All right, so Ethereum, you know, is like the most stable <laughs> uh, crypto, you know, so far. Just like nice, smooth incline. It has not broken any trend line yet. You know, if it's going to break a trend line down like Bitcoin just recently did, you know, that's going to be significant, but it hasn't. So it's still looking good. I like I like Ethereum <clears throat> and uh, I'm probably most bullish about uh, Ethereum, um, especially uh, good for uh, longer term holding. Storm X prediction. What is Storm X? Storm X USD. That's a uh, uh, yeah, not looking good. It's on the downtrend. Uh, whatever that is, <laughs> if that's a particular coin, you have higher high. I mean, you have a high, and then you have a low, and the low is lower than this low, so that's a downtrend. So this stock is in a downtrend. I mean, this stock, this coin, this crypto, is in a downtrend. Yeah, <laughs> Kelly says, Todd, just a warning. Uh, he doesn't like SOS. Yeah, but I'm like, who, who, who does? 
who likes SOS and why? Give me a good thesis on that. No, but seriously, look, SOS was uh, doing well and then it did its shelf offering and uh, it hasn't been able to recover since and it's been making uh, lower lows and lower highs ever since then. That's a really sloppy <laughs> drawing I would right there. But yeah, uh, SOS on the downtrend. Let's take a look at Riot. Riot, uh, <clears throat> kind of in a sideways uh, pattern right now. In fact, maybe even struggling to make higher highs and instead making lower highs every time. Uh, so uh, if that continues, that could be bearish. Uh, little by little, uh, this thing may be um, breaking down and then eventually uh, maybe in the <clears throat> end of July, uh, end of the summer, uh, it may break down. So watch yourself in riot. Uh, let's take a look at Mara. Uh, we already looked at uh, Mavis already, Krishna. <clears throat> we did. Uh, Mara is in a little bit of a better shape. Uh, it's been, you know, moving on up, uh, making higher highs. Lately, you could say it broke that trend line. So that could be a problem like right in there. Um, so we'll see how that <clears throat> comes out in the future. It may uh, break down. Uh, otherwise, uh, hopefully, uh, we can see soon in the next maybe month or two months a higher high. Uh, you never do know. Uh, click the link in my bio, you guys, on TikTok. I'm going to check with uh, YouTube now. <clears throat> can you tell me what are some good places to park money for intermediate term? How many ETFs or stocks would you own with 15 to 20 grand? Uh, I would get you into like 10 ETFs, uh, um, Matthew, and they would be uh, economic. Uh, one of them you can go ahead and get in right away is 10% in allocation in BizD, B-I-Z-D. <clears throat> Somebody asked for so your safe moon. Let's take a look at safe. Moon. I don't think that I can see safe moon on uh, yeah on this. Let me get it up on uh, Coin Market Cap. All right. So in, in this chart. We have a 75% retracement, which is not great. It's not super bullish, okay? Um, and then we have it topping out at a 50% uh, level of retrace after that drop off and on the decline again. So what we got to hope for, fingers crossed, is that before we reach that bottom level of 75% again, uh, decline, retrace, uh, that safe moon can break up and out of that recent pivot high that it just made. So looking at, we're, we got to hope that it goes to, uh, you know, like 10, 10 cents, whatever, whatever, you know, right now, whatever, with all those zeros in front of it, uh, consider it like five, okay? Uh, we need it to go to about 10, really, to be confident that the thing's still making progress. Safe moon, be careful in it. Uh, quantum scape, somebody would like to see. All right, let's see. Uh, how can I switch over to the previous tab? Nope. To move this up just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Quantumscape, and your question was, you got in at 61 and you're stuck with it. Okay, let's go over the stuck with it um, philosophy for a second here. All right, look, you have money. It's, it's in Quantumscape right now. Did you know that um, there are other stocks on the market. There's like 10,000 or more, right? And some of them are making money. Why don't you put the money that's in QuantumScape on one of the other ones that's making money? Maybe you'll get your money back sooner than letting it rot in QuantumScape, right? <laughs> so, I mean, this is just, you know, basic philosophy is like, why are you why are you holding something that's not making you money when you can take that exact same money out of it and put it in something else that is making you money? All right, very important. Ada Cardana. Why don't want that come up? All right, let me try pulling it up on the coin uh, market cap.
Cardano. There we go, because I spelled it wrong. All right. So what do we have here with uh, ADA Cardano is this triple top. And then we have some rising uh, base going on, little bit of appreciation level there. So this could be a very slow gainer. Could take um, four more months before you see, uh, before you see price really explode on uh, ADA. UAVS. This is how I let me, let me pull up a couple more um, crypto stocks while I'm on the crypto screen. Can we look at Torch? Uh, hmm, yeah, that's probably not a good idea as far as what you were just saying. Or right, Palantir. There's been a lot of people who wanted to look at Palantir. So we'll go back to the uh, charts on Trading View and pull up Palantir. <clears throat> So same kind of thing with this one. Palantir had this uh, trend that it was in, this base level of appreciation that it was on, which unfortunately broke down right here. And so that was when it was over for Palantir and it flipped from being a stock or a company that was appreciating in value to now one that you can only depreciate in value. And it's doing what we're calling milking. It's uh, milking its uh, investors uh, little by little uh, before uh, the breakdown in price. And, and for me, my price target is between 10 and 7 on Palantir, right in that range. So when it gets down in there, uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to buy some for about a seven-year hold. But in the short term, does not look good. Neo, <clears throat> same thing there, same exact thing. I mean, it's just like, right, uh, Kelly and you guys, you know, we see it every time. It's like, you guys are probably even slapping your head, but there it is. It broke the trend line, the value line, the rate of return of a business. And uh, that was when it was over and it flipped at that point on that day uh, to being bearish. And so then it started to put it in lower lows and now it's going through the milking phase and it should be done sometime in uh, August, perhaps, and then it's going to drop some more. Hey, if it does better, great, right? But uh, be careful because Microsoft doesn't do that. <laughs> what about skills? It was a killer and then it popped. Generally curious because it burned me. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Skills. Uh, so the thing with skills is it's put in a pretty strong bottom reversal. We were bearish on it. Uh, this kind of strong candle typically is an ignition of a new move, a new direction, a new sentiment in the company. So even though it was in a downtrend by putting in the lower highs and the lower lows, let's see if I can draw them out for you real quick. Uh, this uh, igniter bar, this green one, was so strong uh, that indeed it was able to overcome downtrend pivot. And this today marks a fully confirmed reversal because it broke that pivot point right there. And uh, as it should, because this, this igniter, an igniter bar a couple days ago was so strong. That was your signal a couple days ago. So it may pull back tomorrow. You know, uh, and then for a couple days, uh, but then it probably will continue to move up. I don't really know how long that uptrend is going to go. You know, uh, at some point, uh, things may change for the company. It's got earnings release coming up, so that could factor in coming up in about a week. That was skills, SKLZ. Please look at corn. <laughs> it and other agricultural ETFs on a crazy run recently. Sure, of course, right. Wow, look at corn. Actually, I haven't looked at corn probably probably since that. And uh, this right here, this huge green igniter bar, that could have told you that some kind of appreciation was coming. You could get in at the top end of an igniter bar like that 
And if it stays within the top third, even the top 50% of the bar, it's still in play. And so you had five days to get in back here, a whole week to get into corn based on this igniter bar. I wasn't aware of it. If someone had brought that to my attention, uh, I definitely would have pointed it out that this would have been something you could sink a whole bunch of money into. Uh, because once it uh, curves up and out, it typically trends uh, up but this strongly uh, would have been a bonus. You can't expect that, but you could expect, you know, something like that to go on. But whoo, what a run corn is on. Yep, corn uh, going uh, from essentially 1740 to uh, 2080 now. Uh, let's see. So that is a 20% increase in just a couple of days. The, the options, however, on corn would have been really cheap. So in other words, you could have made a small fortune on that move right there. Now, as far as getting in now, boy, I can't imagine how you could. Uh, one thing you could do is just get in if it works out, great. Uh, you need to watch your candle lows. So that means uh, every uh, previous day, uh, set your stop to the previous day's low. Every day that happens, set your stop to the previous day's low and then just stay in and hold on for dear life and see how long it'll run. I mean, outside of getting in on a pullback, somebody wants to take a look at Fubo. Fubo never ends. <laughs> when, are, when are we going to stop looking at Fubo? Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, Fubo broke trend line around here and uh, also couldn't get a uh, higher high going uh, even before that. So it was pretty much uh, in a downtrend uh, at this point here. Uh, and it is in a downtrend. And it keeps hitting a low, keeps hitting lower lows, lower highs. And that hasn't changed. We looked at it two weeks ago and I said the same thing. Hasn't changed, keeps going down. So that's probably what it's gonna do. I'm drawing it right now for you. We can look at it in, in, in a month and this is what it's gonna look like. <laughs> Something like that. We'll see. All right. Corn is unhinged now. Kelly, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. It is, yeah, very difficult. Can almost only be day traded, crazy enough. Corn, who would have thought? Uh, you know, another thing that's been uh, on a mad tear for about a year now is lumber. Lumber prices up between 400 and 800% in one year. What used to be a $5 sheet of plywood is now a $50 sheet of plywood. That's a thousand percent increase. So uh, lumber is up like 800%. Uh, have you gone over Apple for a pre-earnings run-up? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at Apple. Everybody on TikTok, uh, please follow me over on uh, the link in my bio. Come on in, join my Discord. Love to have you. We do live trading every day. All right, uh, Apple. Uh, the diagnosis there is we we definitely have to wait and see. Uh, Apple's just been sideways for so long. I guess you could say it's it has been appreciating on the on the bottom side, right? Uh, if you were to put all that together, I'd feel like we're kind of sitting on a flat top wedge like that, <clears throat> and we have inflation working against Apple, who has thirty five percent of the company in debt. That was a dumb idea of the CEO to do that. Steve Jobs had the company debt-free with cash stockpile for his entire tenure. And now uh, uh, this current CEO has put Apple into about 35% debt uh, in just a matter of like less than 10 years. Uh, then you have inflation on top of that. So like, you know, the fact that it's in 35% debt. So yeah, not not too great, and we've got the you know whole coronavirus thing going on. So it, we'll see what the earnings release uh, uh, does for Apple, uh, but you know Apple has not been a good performer for since like September of last year. It's been a long time since Apple has been able to do anything for you, so I wouldn't get your hopes up for Apple. Time to move on there, like your ancient history, like the amount of money that you're making by playing Apple. 
is like, you know, old times, like a hundred years ago, like we're way beyond Apple. Like there's other stocks on the stock market to trade now. There's even crypto. I mean, there's a whole lot moving more than Apple. So don't get stuck on Apple. Don't get stuck on companies. Don't get, uh, what is that? Like a mental, uh, I forget what they say, like a fixation or something. You can't do that in the stock market. It's always changing. You have to be uh, very quick to adapt. It, usually you have to adapt overnight, if not sooner. And that meant like, fuck Apple starting in September. So do I think Tesla earnings, uh, do you think after Tesla earnings today, it will go down? All right, yeah, let's take a look at Tesla. <clears throat> So uh, Tesla in after hours, uh, I need to see how it traded. Let's take a look on the one hour chart. Uh, it was at 740 and it just went down to 720. Uh, it's putting a bit of a bearish trend. Uh, so it's probably probably will continue tomorrow. Um, you know, Tesla reversed recently. It was in a downtrend. Uh, it was in this huge downtrend here. Um, and then it started to put in this attempt to break this pivot. Uh, which it couldn't quite do. And then whoof, uh, in just two days, it, it really, really broke it. Then it bounced off the bottom end, which was the top of resistance turned into support. And that's a very bullish sign. So I expect Tesla to go up based on all that. So this earnings, I mean, we got to see, maybe analysts are running the numbers tonight. They're going to release the reports in the morning. Uh, we'll see uh, the, the chart itself essentially says good things about Tesla. Hey, Faraz, of course there is. Class every night. Well, Monday and Tuesday nights. <laughs> yeah, we did look at Mavis. We already looked at Mavis twice tonight. Uh, Sandal, Sundial. Uh, really? Okay. Sundial Growers. It's been on this uh, internal rate of return trajectory, uh, which it's still on. So I think from here, it's a good buy. This is a good buy region. And uh, you may see it go on uh, some of these hype spike runs in the future as more people uh, become interested in it. Uh, as of right now, it's still in good shape. If it were to fall lower, uh, you know, you would want to get out, put your money on something else that makes money. All right, everybody on TikTok, make sure you uh, click the link in my bio to come join us on uh, in my trading room. We try trade live every day or follow me, follow me, uh, make sure that you follow me and then you'll be notified anytime I go live with my uh, technical analysis or live trading, which we'll be doing uh, all day on Wednesday. And we also do every morning session uh, Monday through Friday. <clears throat> <laughs> David's like, no. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in tonight, everybody. And I will see you in the morning for live day trading. All right. Make sure you uh, join the Discord uh, and click the link in my bio. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. David Sacedo, our classes are uh, <clears throat> every night, uh, well, Monday, through, Monday and Tuesdays at... Uh, 9 p.m. Eastern.